Hi, uh, this is Sureka from Biochemistry Department. Today we will see a lecture on uh, nucleic acid introduction, uh, which covers the genetic materials such as DNA, RNA, base composition, basic structure of DNA, and function of DNA. So, in this uh, topic, you have got uh, one short note question that is structure of DNA and also. Uh, the base composition such as nucleotide nucleosides will be asked in your mcqs so kindly uh, refer book uh, satya narayana book page number 72 in order to synchronize the ppt with the book and also the structure of dna will be uh, seen in the page number 77 whereas uh, the introduction part of this uh, uh, ppt is seen in uh, satya narayana book page number 72 uh, now we'll get into the topic so we will see the introduction of nucleic acid. Uh, so the nucleic acid, we all know it is a macromolecules present in the living cells. So all the living cells consist of nucleic acid, which is a macromolecule. And they are the carriers of genetic information from one generation to another generation. So and they are composed of a polymer of nucleotides. So the nucleotides are linked by the phosphodiester bond. Hence, they are called as polynucleotides. And the nucleic acid is of two types. One is uh, deoxyribonucleic acid and otherwise called as DNA. Another one is uh, ribonucleic acid and is otherwise called as RNA. So as we all know, DNA is present in the nucleus and small amount will also be present in the mitochondria. So mitochondrial DNA is also present in our system. Uh, whereas 90% uh, of RNA is present in the cytoplasm and 10% is present in the nucleolus. First, we'll say about nucleosides. Usually, the DNA structure consisting of nucleotides. But nucleoside is of a structure consisting of pentosugar and the nitrogenous base. We'll see what is uh, pentosugar and nitrogenous base in the upcoming slides. I'll just tell you what is nucleosides and how it is uh, formed. See here, uh, the pentosugar uh, is of two types. One is deoxyribose, the other one is the uh, ribose sugar. And nitrogenous bases of purines and pyrimidines are there. So we'll be seeing that in the uh, later slides. And they are linked by the end glycosidic linkage. So end glycosidic bond will be formed in between the uh, ribose sugar and your uh, nitrogenous base so the nitrogenous base my either it may be purine or it may be pyrimidine so in case of purine uh, to the nitrogen number nine atom your uh, sugar uh, sugar molecule will get attached to similarly to the uh, pyrimidine uh, base your uh, to the nitrogen one atom the pento sugar get attached to it this is how there will be the formation of the nucleosides in the dna so this structure is called this is, this is called nucleosides and when you have a phosphate group attached with this nucleoside then it is called nucleotides so nucleoside is of pentose and uh, nitrogenous base whereas nucleotides is of pentosugar nitrogenous base and the phosphate so here in the picture i have mentioned that base plus sugar gives you nucleoside whereas base plus sugar plus phosphate together they are called nucleotides so this is just initial of your the nucleoside is just initial of your nucleotides if phosphate gets attached to nucleoside it is called nucleotide so we'll see how it is formed and what are all the basic components in the upcoming slides Secondly, we will see about nucleotides. Previously, we have seen nucleosides. It is composed of nitrogenous base and the pento sugar. They are linked by the end glycosidic linkage. So, in nucleotides, uh, it, is, it is made of uh, three components. One is nitrogenous base. They are linked to the ribose sugar by the uh, glycosidic linkage. And the sugar gets attached to the phosphate group. So, this three together they form a structure called nucleotides so the n atom of the uh, nitrogenous base gets attached to the carbon one of the pento sugar uh, whereas the fifth carbon um, atom of the pento sugar get attached to the phosphate group this is how they form a structure called nucleotides so we'll see one by one uh, like first is the nitrogenous basis of DNA and RNA. So in the nucleotide, the nitrogenous base is the primary or uh, uh, primary thing seen in the uh, nucleotide base. So so in uh, nitrogenous base is of two types. One is purine, another one is pyrimidine. We'll see what will be coming under the purine and what will be coming under the pyrimidine in the upcoming slides.
So we'll see uh, purine bases first. There are two principal purine bases found in both DNA and RNA. They are adenine and guanine. So in your uh, slide, you can see the structure of adenine in your left and structure of guanine in your right. So this is the uh, prime principal uh, structure of purine bases. So this will be present both in DNA and RNA. So I wanted to say you this, uh, this can be asked in your MCQs, what are all the purine bases, nucleotides and uh, what the nucleotide composition, that means if they ask for the composition, you have to write the nucleotide, uh, nitrogenous base, uh, pentose sugar and the phosphate. These are all the things which can be asked in your uh, examination in your MCQs. Uh, now we have come to the next slide that is the pyrimidine basis. So this is actually the animated slide. You can click the next button in order to see the animation. Primarily there are three pyrimidine bases. There are cytosine, uracil and thiamine. So out of uh, this three, cytosine is the common pyrimidine base present in both DNA and the RNA. So cytosine is present both in DNA and RNA. And uracil is the another pyrimidine base found exclusively in the RNA. So out of three, the cytosine and the uracil will be found in the RNA. Whereas the cytosine and the thiamine will be found in the DNA. So DNA uh, containing thiamine uh, exclusively in its composition. Uh, so now down you can see the structures of individual pyrimidine bases, cytosine, thiamine and the uracil. So, so far we have seen the nitrogenous base. Under nitrogenous base, we have seen purine and the pyrimidine. The purine is of adenine and the guanine. The adenine and the guanine will be present both in the DNA and RNA. And next comes the pyrimidine bases. In the pyrimidine base, cytosine will be present both in RNA and DNA. Whereas, uracil is the a nucleotide which present in the virus is the pyrimidine base which present in the RNA whereas thiamine is the uh, pyrimidine base exclusively present in the DNA. So you have to know the difference that the RNA will be consisting of pure nucleotide that is uh, adenine and guanine and the pyrimidine nucleotide cytosine and uracil. Whereas DNA containing the purine uh, nucleotide adenine and guanine and the pyrimidine nucleotide cytosine and thiamine. So these are all the differences uh, you have to uh, you have to be careful with. Now we have come to the another important composition of uh, nucleotide that is pentose sugar. So the pentose sugar is of either uh, dextrorotatory ribose that is D ribose or dextrorotatory 2 deoxy ribose or D2 deoxy ribose. The DNA consisting of D2 deoxy ribose, whereas RNA consisting of D ribose. So, in the structure of DNA, you could see only D2 deoxy ribose, whereas in structure of RNA, you could see only D ribose. That's it. So, uh, uh, because uh, the, there is in the pento sugar, you can see the differences in the structure. Thereby, the structure, the name of the uh, pento sugar varies. See here the picture showing the deoxy ribose in your left and the ribose in the right. In the deoxy ribose, in the second carbon uh, atom, you can see the H atom. So when the when it is in the deoxy form, the ribose is called as deoxy ribose. So the uh, the usual ribose will be consisting of OH in the second carbon. So that is there is a difference. So this differences uh, makes the DNA uh, sugar vary from the RNA sugar. So the DNA will be consisting of uh, two deoxy ribose, whereas RNA consisting of uh, ribose. So this ribose is get linked with the uh, nitrogenous base with the covalent N glycosidic linkage or N glycosidic bond. So to the first carbon uh, carbon atom of the ribose or deoxy ribose, your purine or the pyrimidine get attached to by the N glycosidic bond. So this is the pento sugar present in the nucleotides. So to the fifth carbon here, the phosphate groups get attached to it and then it is called as nucleotides. So we have seen the compositions of the nucleotides. Now we will see how the nucleotides are linked and they are named. 
so in this slide uh, you can see uh, the nucleotides are the phosphorylated uh, nucleosides so i told you the nucleosides is of made of nitrogenous base and the pentose sugar so to the nitrogenous base and the pentose sugar the phosphate group get attached to then the structure is called nucleotides so the nucleotides are phosphorylated nucleosides and the phosphor phosphate groups get attached to the pentose sugar with the ester linkage uh, to the fifth carbon of the pentose sugar so depending on the pentose sugar the nucleotides uh, may be called as uh, deoxyribonucleotides or ribonucleotides so in deoxyribonucleotides the nucleotides will be consisting of pentose sugar deoxyribose and they are the monomeric units of the dna so the dna will be consisting of uh, deoxyribose and in the ribonucleotides the nucleotide will be consisting of the pentose sugar d ribose and they are the monomeric units of the rna which means the rna will be consisting of the ribose nucleotide in this slide you can see the formation of uh, names upon the combination of uh, a pentose sugar and the nitrogenous base uh, if the pentose sugar is a uh, ribose and the nitrogenous base is uh, adenine then the structure is called uh, adenosine uh, similarly, uh, if the nitrogenous base is uh, cytosine and the uh, ribose sugar gets conjugated, then the structure is called citidine. Similarly, uh, when you come to the nucleotides, I mean ribonucleotides, uh, there the phosphate group get attached with the adenosine, then the structure is called adenosine 5 dash monophosphate because uh, the phosphate group attached to the fifth carbon atom of the ribose sugar, hence it is called adenosine 5 monophosphate. Similarly, to the citidine, if the phosphate group gets attached with, then it is formed a citidine 5 dash monophosphate. This is a ribonucleotides. So, when you come to the deoxyribonucleosides, so to the deoxyribose sugar, the uh, adenine, adenine uh, uh, nitrogenous base gets attached to it and the structure is called deoxyadenosine. Similarly, uh, to the uh, pyrimidine base that is uh, cytosine, the deoxyribose gets attached to it, then the structure is called deoxycitidine. So, deoxy forms will be found in the DNA. So, when you come to the deoxyribonucleotides, uh, the phosphate groups gets attached to the uh, deoxyribonucleosides, then the structure is called deoxyadenosine 5 dash monophosphate. So, the, to the fifth uh, carbon position of the ribose sugar, I mean deoxyribose sugar, you are uh, uh, phosphate group gets attached with then this structure is called deoxyadenosine 5 dash monophosphate similarly to the deoxycitidine uh, to the fifth position uh, your uh, phosphate groups get attached with then the structure is called deoxycitidine 5 dash monophosphate so uh, the uh, ribonucleosides and new ribonucleotides will be found in the uh, RNA whereas deoxyribonucleotides will be found in the DNA. So you can see the uridin. Uridin means uracil, the presence of the pyrimidine base uracil in the RNA whereas the pyrimidine base thymine will be seen in the deoxyribonucleotides. I mean DNA. Previously, we have seen the formation of nucleoside monophosphate or uh, phosphorylated uh, nucleoside that is nucleotide. So DNA will be consisting of uh, nucleotide with the monophosphate but nucleoside diphosphate and triphosphate can also possible due to the additional phosphate group gets attached to the existing phosphate. So uh, because uh, this nucleoside diphosphate and nucleoside triphosphate may be used in the um, many other biochemical functions. They involve in biochemical function as a different forms that we will see in the functions of the nucleotides. And uh, when you come to the uh, structures of the uh, nucleoside the monophosphate, uh, the, to the deoxyadenosine 5 dash monophosphates gets attached, then the structure is called uh, deoxyadenosine 5 dash monophosphate. Here, only one phosphate is seen in the 5 dash uh, uh, carboxyl group of the deoxyribo sugar. In uh, deoxyadenosine 5 dash diphosphate, two groups of uh, phosphate gets attached to the 5 dash end. Similarly, in the deoxyadenosine 5 dash triphosphate, three groups of um, phosphate groups gets attached to the uh, five, uh, five dash uh, five dash group of the uh, deoxy ribo sugar so depending upon the number of uh, phosphate group the name of the nucleoside varies 
when you come to the function of nucleotides uh, the nucleotides can act as a building blocks of the genetic materials uh, such as rna and dna they are the building blocks of the monomeric units of the uh, dna and rna and apart from that they can also perform many other functions in our system so they act as a coenzyme by conjugating with the b complex vitamins uh, say for example fad nad nadp plus uh, the coenzyme these are all the various uh, nucleotide base conjugated uh, uh, vitamins uh, they help they act as a coenzyme and involved in many biochemical reactions uh, so i told you in the previous slide uh, the nucleoside diphosphate uh, in the form of uh, diphosphate or triphosphate so they perform the function like this so here the diphosphate uh, adenine uh, dinucleotide phosphate they act as a coenzyme similarly uh, the nucleotides can act as a high energy intermediates in the biosynthesis of uh, carbohydrate lipid and protein uh, say for example udp glucose cdp acyl uh, glycerol s adenosyl methionine these are all various high energy intermediates they formed upon the combination of nucleotide with uh, with the biosynthesis of carbohydrate lipids and the proteins there are three more functions uh, will be performed by the nucleotides that will be shown in the next slide the another important function of nucleotides is the nucleotides can function as the energy currency of the cell uh, say for example adenosine triphosphate or atp they act as a high energy currency of the cell of the, our system similarly the nucleotide can control the uh, metabolic reaction and they act as allosteric regulators they act they either uh, inhibit it or they inhibit the reaction or by activate the reaction or mean metabolic reactions and thus they are acting as a allosteric regulators similarly this uh, nucleotide such as uh, cyclic amp and cyclic gmp can act as a second messengers in the hormonal functions so during the hormonal uh, action the cyclic amp cyclic gmp they act as a second messenger in order to pass the signal of the hormones to the respective uh, protein so this uh, see, cyclic amp or cyclic gmp they are nucleotides they act as a second messenger so so these are all the various uh, uh, important functions performed by the nucleotides other than the uh, building blocks of the genetic material now we have come to an important topic that is structure of dna Uh, the structure of dna is a very important short note question which can be asked in your examination uh, so we all know the dna is a very long thread like structure which is composed fully of deoxyribonucleotides so previously we have seen how the deoxyribonucleotides uh, are formed it is compo composed of three main components that is uh, nitrogenous base sugar and the phosphate group the sugar present in deoxyribonucleotides deoxyribo sugar and uh, the dna structure will be consisting of single phosphate group so this is the basic uh, thing we have already I mean we have already seen in the uh, uh, previous slide uh, how the deox deoxynucleotides are formed so we'll see how the uh, what are all the functions played by the each component so the nitrogenous base present in the structure of dna helps in the carrier of the genetic information so they are the nitrogenous base are the solely responsible for carrying the genetic information whereas sugar and the phosphate group present in the structure of dna helps in providing the structural backbone of the dna so here uh, you could see the structure of the dna here we all know dna is a double helical structure they run anti parallelly like they are wound in such a way they run in a anti parallelly like 5 dash to 3 dash and 3 dash to 5 dash and, and you can see the uh, sugar and the phosphate uh, backbone so the backbone of the uh, uh, the backbone of the structure of dna Uh, is mainly due to the presence of the sugar and the phosphate uh, and because of the linkage the linkage provided by the sugar and the phosphate is the phosphodiester linkage that we will see in the uh, next slide how the phosphodiester linkage is formed between the deoxynucleotides and they help in providing the structural backbone of the dna and in between the structure of the dna you could see the nitrogenous base they are responsible for the carrier of the genetic information so each purine bases pairs with each pyrimidine bases uh, with the hydrogen bond linkage so this is the basic structure of the dna we'll see one by one in the next coming upcoming slides
in the continuation of the dna structure the third point given is the sugar present in the deoxyribonucleotide is the deoxyribose sugar so i told you the dna will be consisting of deoxyribose sugar in it and the purine bases present in the dna are adenine and the guanine and the pyrimidine bases present in the dna are thymine and the cytosine this we have already seen now we'll see how the dna deoxyribonucleotides are linked so the de the single deoxyribonucleotides they are linked together to form a polymer or a chain or a strand of the dna they are linked covalently by the 3-5-phosphodiester bond so the DNA, dna is a polymer of many deoxyribonucleotides they are linked together by the 3 dash 5 dash phosphodiester bonds so previous slide i have given you the introduction this 3 dash 5 dash phosphodiester bond only responsible for the providing the structural backbone of the dna stand so we'll see how this 3 dash 5 dash phosphodiester is formed so i told you the single stand of dna they run from 5 dash to 3 dash end so the 3 dash hydroxyl group of the sugar moiety of one deoxyribonucleotide is joined to the another 5 dash uh, hydroxyl group of the adjacent uh, sugar moiety by the phosphodiester linkage because they, they run from 3 5 dash to 3 dash so to the 3 dash hydroxyl group of one sugar moiety the 5 dash hydroxyl group of the another sugar moiety that just forms a linkage that is called a phosphodiester linkage here in the structure you can see how the the uh, phosphodiester uh, bond is formed in between the two deoxyribonucleotide when it runs from 5 dash to 3 dash end in, which helps in providing the backbone of the dna stand in this slide you can see watson crick double helical structure of the dna the famous uh, two biologists james watson and uh, francis crick in the year 1953 they discovered the uh, 3d structure of the dna so when they uh, decode the structure of the dna they found some of the important features of the dna the first is the they found that dna is a double helical structure they are coiled in such a way and they run in the opposite direction so which means uh, they run anti parallelly that means uh, 5 dash to 3 dash and 3 dash to 5 dash and they got two helical polynucleotide chains and coiled around common axis and in between the uh, helical structure they found purine and the pyrimidine bases and uh, whereas outside the uh, helix they found phosphate and the deoxyribose units so which uh, helps in providing the structural backbone of the dna whereas uh, the nucleotide uh, basis helps in uh, carrier of the genetic information which is found inside the double helix this slide shows you the third important feature of the watson and crick uh, dna model that is in this slide they have given you the measurement of the dna so the diameter of the helix was found to be 20 armstrong unit uh, they discovered the diameter of the uh, helix that means that width between the 5 dash and the 3 dash end was found to be uh, 20 armstrong unit and the complemented complementary base pair distance uh, was found to be 3.4 armstrong unit which means uh, the two adjacent complementary base pairs they found to have a distance of 3.4 armstrong unit and they have all they have also given you the main major groove and minor groove in the picture so the one complete turn of the dna means uh, the, the the combination of the major groove and the minor groove single major groove and the single minor groove which gives you one complete turn of the uh, dna structure so which one complete turn of dna structure will be consisting of 10 nucleotides with an interval of 34 armstrong unit so the minor groove and the major groove combination to have a 10 uh, nucleotide residue in it with an interval of 30 34 armstrong unit so this is the this is will be the measurement or the prominent structure of the dna which was derived by the watson and creek so uh, they, they are also derived uh, some of the other characteristics that will be followed in the next slide
Uh, previously, we have seen the Watson and Crick uh, DNA double helical structures introduction and some of the important features of the uh, Watson and Crick DNA model. Uh, in this slide, you will see how the single strand of uh, uh, DNA, that means uh, the polymer of deoxyribonucleotide, single strand, it gets uh, linked with the adjacent strand of the uh, DNA to form a double helical structure. So they are held, the single polymer of deoxyribonucleotide, they are held together by the hydrogen bond linkage. So the hydrogen bond will be formed between the nitrogenous bases. So each purine uh, nitrogenous base complementary pairs with the pyrimidine nitrogenous base. Usually the adenine is always paired with pairs with the thymine with two hydrogen bonds. You have to remember this adenine pairs with thymine with two hydrogen bonds and guanine pairs with cytosine with three hydrogen bonds. This is how the pairing will be uh, seen in the DNA, uh, the uh, CN in the DNA. Uh, see in the picture they have provided you the nitrogen bond linkage between the adenine and the thymine is of two hydrogen bond, whereas uh, guanine and cytosine it is of three hydrogen bonds. Watson and Crick also found that the two strands of DNA was found to be complementary to each other. So the 5 dash to 3 dash end and 3 dash to 5 dash end of the DNA double helical structure was found to be complementary to each other, which says that the content of the adenine equals to the content of the thymine and the content of the guanine equals to the content of the cytosine. So when the contents are equal to each other, they form a complementary pairing to each other to form a prominent double helical structure. The model also proposed by the Watson and Crick is a B form of DNA, that is B DNA, which is a right-handed helix, which consisting of 10 base pairs per turn. So each turn will be consisting of 10 base pairs and is of right-handed helix. Uh, in case of B DNA, that is uh, proposed by Watson and Crick. So I told you that turn uh, is, is uh, made by the groups, uh, combination of groups, major group and the minor group. So the major group is the where the backbone was found to, found apart, whereas in minor group the backbone of DNA was uh, found close by. So in a combination of major group and minor group, uh, the double helical structure found to have a base pair of 10 per turn in the right-handed helix that DNA was derived to be B DNA. And also other forms of DNA uh, uh, may, be, uh, may be occur in our system, which may be A DNA and Z DNA. A DNA is nothing but a right-handed DNA will be consisting of 11 base pair per turn. Uh, B DNA will be consisting 10 base pair per turn, whereas A DNA is a right-handed DNA with 11 base pair per turn. And Z DNA is the left-handed uh, double helical structure of the DNA. So under physiologic condition, DNA is almost entirely in the Watson Crick uh, B form, which means like uh, during the replication, during any processing of uh, multiplication, the DNA will be in the um, or any uh, genetic information transmission. Those time the DNA will be in the B form. In this slide, you will be studying char gaps rule. This is also the continuation of uh, structure of DNA. Previously, you would have studied uh, uh, the Watson and Crick model of DNA where uh, DNA is of two strand and it was held by the hydrogen bond and base pairing between adenine and thymine, guanine and the cytosine. This was explained by Watson and Crick. Now we have come to Chargaff's rule. Chargaff's rule was discovered by Erwin Chargaff. After isolating uh, DNA from several species, he found that the quantity of purine is uh, equal to that of the quantity of the pyrimidines. So which means uh, the content of the adenine is equal to thymine the same way the content of the guanine is equal to content of the cytosine. So he also says that the one member of the base pair in the DNA must be purine, the other member must be pyrimidine. So only the purine can uh, form a base pairing with the pyrimidine. Uh, and also this base restriction, uh, base pairing restriction explains that double standard DNA molecule to have a content of the adenine is equal to thymine the same way the content of the guanine is equal to that of the cytosine. When you, uh, when you calculate the ratio of the purine to the pyrimidine base in the DNA is always found to be 1. This explains the char gaps rule. So the complementary pairing between the uh, purine and the pyrimidine was found to be equal. So the quantity of the or the content of 
of the purine is always found to be equal to the content of the pyrimidine and when you calculate the ratio of the purine to the pyrimidine base in the DNA is also found to be 1. So the Watson and Crick model also found to follow the Chargaff's rule and Chargaff's rule was discovered by Erwin Chargaff. Now we have come to the function of the DNA. Uh, we all know DNA is a store of the genetic information. So the genetic information, the entire genetic information of the organism is stored in the DNA. Uh, with that, they perform two important functions. One is they are solely responsible for the synthesis of all proteins in our system. So all the proteins in our system are derived from the source of information stored in the DNA. And second is the, they just help in the transfer of the genetic information from the parent to the daughter cells or the offsprings. So the information will be carried to the next generation uh, by the uh, stored by the DNA. So these are all the two important functions uh, uh, derived from the DNA. And with this, I'm um, uh, ending the lecture. In this lecture, you have seen the basic introductions of the DNA, RNA, the structure of DNA, function of DNA. So if you have any further clarification, please do mail me. Thank you.